Hey guys, MasterCoX here, and welcome to... Actually, you know what? Let's make this an informal MasterVox, shall we? For those of you who don't know what MasterVox is, it was a little series that I made in 2009-2010 talking about the joys and tribulations of voice acting, and it's mostly joys, I can assure you. It was all very comprehensive, however, now looking back on it, it feels a little bit more regimented and strict, and I don't want to be that guy that goes, actually, you have to do this, and you have to do this, 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 and that. No, I don't want to be like that. What I want to be like is, you know, this setting. A bit informal, right next to my equipment, and just talk about stuff. Talk about this particular topic you guys are actually interested in instead of me FORCING MY OPINIONS DOWN YOUR THROAT! Sorry. Where do we begin? Well, first off, you need a microphone. Otherwise, you're just going to be that guy who's just shouting voices in the middle of the street, and the people around you will hear it and think you're a little weird, but no one else outside that vicinity will actually be able to hear your voicey goodness. Or insanity. Depends on what their mood is that day. Put simply, a microphone is a tool to enable you to record audio, and then through the magic of saving audio files as digital data, you can actually just play it back later for anyone to use, copy, or just play back. Now I kind of want to go over the 11 year voyage that I've done with microphones over the time that I've been on the internet properly. I started off in 2005 with a very cheap Logitech USB desktop microphone. 15 bucks that cheap. And that was back in 2004. Because I had this microphone before I started, so I just stuck with what I had. And I recorded the first 11 episodes of Naruto abridged with it. It was alright for the time when the bridging standards were much lower than they are today. But eventually, when you want to get a little bit more elaborate and you want to scream, especially these days when screaming for DBZA is pretty much part of the course, you need something a little bit more substantial. And that's what I moved to in 2007 with the Samsung CA1U. That was kind of the moment when USBs went from, ooh, look at that USB microphone, isn't that a novelty? <laughs> to, oh, okay, they're being serious. This served me well. It's the longest serving microphone I've had in my possession from 2007 to 2011. So pretty much the entire rest of Naruto abridged as you know it was recorded on that microphone. I'd have stuck with it for a lot longer had I not been more serious about voice acting because TFS was really starting to kind of come into its element, you know, DBZA in the middle of the Namek saga. And also the other guys in the team were starting to pick up this microphone in question, the Blue Yeti. I think you can recognize this already because this is pretty much the de facto vlogger, YouTuber, podcaster's microphone of choice. For anyone that just wants to take the step up and have something that's very good and very solid, this is your guy. I can't stop tapping it. The Yeti is a great microphone to have. If you pick this and you're serious about voice acting, this is going to do you good. But, this is the big but, because Blue in their absolute infinite wisdom chose to go the Apple route and go proprietary. And by proprietary, I mean they started making their own accessories at hugely inflated prices. And the one thing that tipped me over the edge was to get a shock mount, which means I could put it on a little stand. It cost 60 pounds or a hundred bucks. What? And even then when I got it, it didn't work. Because it had little rubber washers and I had to replace the rubber washers in the desk mount with the ones already on that. But anyway, I'm not going to get into a rant. What I replaced that with was this one. Apogee Mic 96K for Mac and iOS. And I'll tell you about the iOS thing in a little bit because that's dead useful. I actually got this idea from Chris Sabat. When I went to NomCon 2014, he did a voice acting panel, which meant that he actually had this microphone out to demo dubbing and ADR recording. And people came up, spoke into this microphone, and I heard it and I was, oh my God, that sounds amazing. And it comes from this little guy. It even has a little preamp switch right here. Toggle it up and down, the gain, incredible. But the reason why I don't use this anymore is because I went from Mac to Windows in January of this year. And this microphone at the time doesn't play ball. Oh great Masako, you just wasted, what was about maybe 200 bucks on a microphone that you can't use anymore. Ah, you're wrong. What I have is a little portable stand that comes with the microphone, the microphone itself obviously, and the cable which is actually lightning to USB Y. And the important thing is you can record using your phone. If you want to record remotely, you can, and it's bloody good quality. So now this is my traveling mic. Now we come to present day. 
And what I use right now is the King B microphone from Neat Microphones, which is a division of Gibson. And it's my first XLR microphone. And by XLR, I mean the actual connector that is used for microphones. And it's the standard in the music industry and audiovisual circuit. And one thing I must stress upon when you're getting to this kind of territory with XLR microphones and high-end USB microphones is that it gets expensive. It does. However, you have to consider this. If you're really thinking about making voiceover your career, you've got to invest in the material because the better quality microphones that you have, the more work you're likely going to get. This actual cover, this doesn't come with the microphone, by the way. It's actually a Chaotica eyeball and it's a little foam surround with a pop filter right here and it does great job of isolating reverb in your room so if you have a very echoey room or something that has a lot of reverb this will help deaden it quite a bit what you can hear right now is coming out of that microphone or actually going into the microphone I'm out here so what do you do with this information how serious are you do you just want to do this as a hobby or do you want to do this as your actual potential career? If you want to just do this for fun and just play around with your friends and have a really good Skype microphone, I would actually recommend the Blue Snowball. And the Snowball is about 60 bucks and it's very good quality. A lot of vloggers have them when they're just starting out and USB microphones these days are really good. But if you're really serious about doing voiceover and XLR connections still sort of intimidate you, Gotta go with this guy. Masako, why are you showing me this again? It doesn't work with Windows. Ah, there's a version that does work with Windows now. And best of all, it's cheaper than the Mac version. Wow, Windows being cheaper than Macs. What a surprise. So yeah, that's my talk about microphones. And it may not be that in depth, but ultimately, it shouldn't have to be that in depth. It should just basically be colloquial information. And whatever information you feel like I've imparted to you, you can then take forth and do as you please. You can then go in depth a little further if you want, or you can just take what I've said as read and go and make your decision from there. I would very much like to know what you use personally in the comments and what you're thinking of getting. I'll leave a comment and reply and offer any extra advice down in the comments. Anyway. If you like this information, just be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have the means to, be sure to check out my Patreon, link below. But anyway, that's it for today. So until next time, guys, hope you're well, and catch you later.